This is she. No, no. This would never have done at all. Before one even addressed the matter of trade, the complexion is too weathered. No, for you, Mr. Collins, the Bennett girl is much more suitable. The dress, however, is acceptable. Ralph, it's William, there you are. Aunt? The usual people are here to dine. This Miss Price, also. Anne, come to your mother. At dinner, you shall sit beside Miss Price. It will be a useful exercise for you to make conversation with a person with whom you have nothing in common. Now, let us have music. Who shall play for us? Miss Price disdains the pianoforte, Lady Catherine, but she has the voice of an angel. You are acquainted. Lady Catherine, I forget my duty. I bring the affectionate greetings of the Princess de Cerisay. Dear Marie especially wanted you to know that you are always welcome at the Chateau. Dear Marie, as you know, is very dedicated in her friendship. But she never forgets my birthday. I, on the other hand, forget the whereabouts of the de Cerisay's chateau. Paris, Mr. Darcy, the right bank. The de Cerisay's house occupies rather a lot of it. Hmm. I confess I am none the wiser. No, sir, but you are better informed. Fitzwilliam. You recall the lake with its charming crocodiles and the little ducks bobbing about. Dear Marie, your pronunciation is so singular that I did not recognize the name. How are the de Sugisses? How's the prince? He is very well, Lady Catherine. perfectly well aware, quite impossible for you to be here. Painfully aware, sir. Against my better judgment, I have come at the insistence of Mrs. Collins. If you can possibly find a way of persuading her to send me home, I would be most obliged. Don't they make a lovely couple? It's not my fault Miss Bennett chose to marry Mr. Collins. It was a decision freely made. Quite. This is a free society, Miss Price. Absolutely. She was not constrained at the point of a dagger to take the imbecile Collins to her bet. Everywhere I behold the squalid prospect of grasping arrivists, harlots and liars, scrabbling over each other in the sewer that is existence outside society. The prospect is indeed frightful. Mr. Collins says that Lady Catherine's buttresses are the talk of the county. Buttresses? Uh, being a woman, I know so little about architecture, of course, but I think they form... Yes, I know what buttresses are. First set, Miss Price. Oh, New balls, but now I'm a little astonished to be addressed thus in my own house. My aunt's house. Go. You wish to speak to me, sir? I am concerned. I don't understand. You came to this house knowing you will be brought to Lady Catherine's, knowing I would be there, knowing full well the abysmal disregard in which I hold you. Why, when I am, as you insist, so relentlessly unpleasant to you, do you persist in seeking me out? But I didn't seek you out. You came to me. Why? I don't know. You must know. I do not, and my lack of comprehension is demented. Mrs. Collins needs me. Good night. Sure, this is what you mean to do. 